Welcome, this is my latest video in my FL Sun Q5 3D printer series and I'm new to 3D printing so it's from that perspective and if you find these videos helpful I'll put a link in the description to the hardware I'm using on Amazon and if you use those links it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. I'll also put a link to my FL Sun playlist. In this video I'm going to be setting up and printing a temperature tower to test out some filament that I recently got. It's the Yusu uh, pearlescent white filament. So I'm starting out on Thingiverse and I'll just search for temperature tower. I'm going to click on this one here. It's a smart compact temperature calibration. Let's see what it says when it loads up. Calibration tower. I'll say download all files. Okay, those downloaded. I'll close this. I'll open them up in my computer. It came in a zip file, so I'll double click on that. I'll double click on the folder. I'll open up files. So there's lots of files in here. There are two files I really want to focus on, this PLA T tower. So I'm just going to tag this here so I can find it easily. And then I want the PLA temperature tower, which is this one, I think. Yes. So I will tag that one too. So I'm going to open the, I'll open the text file first. And this has sort of a script on what I need to set up in Cura. I'm going to remove the spell check on here so it's easier to read. And then I'll open up the other file in Cura. So I don't need to change anything here on the left. I do have to change some things over here. So I brought this web page back up because I need to scroll down here and it says the settings to use. It's 0.2 millimeter resolution. We already have that set and it's 15% infill. So I need to come up here to my settings and I'll go to custom and then I'll search for infill. And you'll see here it says infill density. We'll change this to 15%. And then I don't want support and I don't want adhesion on this. So it may seem like we're about ready to print, but we have barely begun. I'm going to pull this over a little bit so I can see that text file I set up. So now back in Cura, I want to go to Extensions, Post Processing, Modify G Code. Now I want to add a script. So there's 10 lines here. I want to add 10 lines to my script. So I'll just count these out one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Because I see I put a color mix up here. <laughs> okay, so I have ten of these now. You could change these one at a time, but I like to just go through and change one parameter on each one. So you see here we have the Z layer is 1.6. So I'm going to go to the top line. I'll change this to 1.6. The next one is 11.6. And then 21.6. We go up 10 each time. 31.6. six, 41.6. 61.6. 71.6. 81.6. And 91.6. So if we look over here, we ended up at 91.6, which is the bottom of our text file is 91.6. So if you end up with a different number, you need to recheck it. So now I'm going to turn on the extruder change temp here, or change extruder one temp on each one of these. Okay, I'll go back to the top, and now we're gonna change this temperature to 225, and then we're going to go down five degrees for each line here. So we'll do 220, 215, 210, 205, 200, 195, 190, 185, 180. So I think my numbers got off here. I'll double check this. So I have 225, 220, 215, 210, 205, 200. 195, 190, 185, 180. Oh, yeah, I didn't have this showing in my text file. So yeah, it does go down to 180. So the filament that I'm using is, has a range of 190 to 225 C temperature. So this will cover the whole range plus a little bit. Um, we're going lower because this stops at 1, 
90 for the filament and this goes down to 180. So we'll see if it'll print at 180, which would be 10 degrees below what the filament is rated at. So what this is going to do is it's going to run a script on the G code and it's going to add in these temperature changes at these heights. So when it starts printing, it will change the temperature while it's printing. Then after it's done printing, we'll be able to analyze the print and see what the best temperature is for this filament. So I'll close this and I'll say slice. I'll save this out to a file. And now you can copy this to an SD card or I'll be using OctoPrint to load this onto my printer. It says it's going to take one hour and 44 minutes to print and it's going to cost 35 cents. So once you figure out the settings for the one printer, you can remember those settings and then use that anytime you use that filament. Next time you buy filament, the same filament, you can uh, reuse those settings. This seems to be taking a little while. I'll let it continue, I guess. Kira may have hung. I'm not real sure here. Okay, it looks like Kira was able to save that out. So I'll go down in Kira here. I'll say upload. I'll load the temperature tower. And now I need to preheat the printer. So I'm going to load the filament into it and I'll preheat it. So I have the printer on. I'm going to hit connect. So I'll set the extruder temperature to 200. I'll set the bed to 60. I'll hit the check marks. That'll start it heating up. And then once this gets up to temperature, I'll start printing it. Okay, it looks like it's about up to temperature. So I'll hit print and I'll come back when this is done printing. So it's currently printing the base at 200 degrees C. And then when it gets up to that first tower, it should uh, heat it up to 225. Okay, so it's doing the temperature change. It's changing it relatively quickly. It's printing right now. I didn't know if it was going to pause before it started the temperature change or if it was just going to start printing. Looks like the temp has risen above the set temperature of 225. We're seeing that on the graph here too. It looks like it has stabilized around 225 now. Okay, the temperature tower is completed. I don't know how well this is going to show up. Let me see if I turn the light off. Maybe it looks good enough without my bright light. So you can see the temperatures are printed here. It says 225, 220, 215, 200, 205, 200, 195, 190, 185, and 180. Okay, I wrote the temperatures on the side so they're a little easier to see. So this has lots of different things on here we can test for. This is the overhang here, and this has a 60 degree, 45 degree, 30 degree, and 25 degree angle along here. And on Thingiverse, they have a little diagram that shows you which is which. And this section here is a bridge. So you have 30 millimeters here and 15 millimeters in the back. So this is a longer span it has to cross than in the back. It has this little tower in here to test stringing. And you can see a lot of stringiness in here. We'll look at this a little closer in just a sec. And this here is a rounded overhang. Okay, so I hooked up my macro lens here so we can get a better look at this. So you can see some stringiness here on the 225. If you look at the undersides of these, you can see how well the bridging did. So the 225 was not great. There's uh, stuff hanging down here. The 215 is very smooth, the 210 is smooth, 205 is smooth. I would say the 200 and probably the 195 is the best in this regard. You see some of these have a little stringing coming off of here. This one has none. This has a little one in the middle. So actually 180 and 185 over here, these are lower than the rated uh, temperature rating for this filament. So it is 190 to 225, but it still did print at 180 and 185. So even going down to 190, it seemed to print pretty good. So we can look at the stringiness here. Probably the 195 to 190 is the best in that regard. So this one has quite a bit. And that is hard to see. I don't know if I can make that show up better. There we go. We can kind of see it there. So the best one there is probably the 190 right there in the middle. So I tried to print a snowflake with this filament and I was printing at 200 and I had a lot of stringiness on it. So I may try and reprint that at 190 and see if I have better results. And then the curves here on the side, 
they look about the same on every level and these curves mostly look the same. I can try and get a close-up of that. It's a little bit of rippling here. And here's the back side. It has like kind of a rippling in it. You can see these kind of little lines. I'm not sure what causes that. I don't know if it's associated with those numbers on the front. Telescoping through, it might be. So I thought this was interesting, and this is my first time doing this. If you notice anything in here that I didn't mention, drop a comment below, because I'm interested in that. You know, I'm trying to learn this stuff. Uh, this is the second filament that I purchased. I have some black filament too. I've not done a temperature tower with it. But when I printed, I printed the vase with this, and it printed fairly well. It did a good job but I printed some snowflakes and had the stringiness, so I wanted to do the temperature tower on this. I haven't really had any problems with the black filament as such, but I may print one of these temperature towers anyway, and I can use the same G-code to do that. That's a nice thing, is it took a little while to get this G-code ready to go, but now that I have it ready to go, I can just load filament in, as long as it's the same type. This is for PLA. If I have PLA filament, I can use the same temperature tower, print it out, and I'll probably keep this around and make sure I know this goes to the, like the pearlescent filament um, and I can reference this later, or I can write it down in a spreadsheet or something. Uh, so I know if I want to print something, uh, you know, with less stringiness, I want to go and say the 195 range or something like that. So I thought this was a pretty cool experiment. If you have any suggestions or questions, please leave those in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.